Let's just look at some uh, DNS server options real quick. And first off, let's take a look at, you know, again, the, the whole server options. Notice that we can decide, um, you know, where we want to listen for name resolution. So on any IP addresses, if this is a multi-homed, you know, server with more than one NIC card and connected to more than one subnet, I can listen on multiple subnets. Or I could also select only the following IP address. We talked about forwarders before, but you know I can add a forwarder address, and then if my DNS server is doing a recursive query and it doesn't really know where to find the name record, it can send it off to a forwarder, and then the forwarder may end up forwarding to yet another DNS, maybe somewhere at the top level of the DNS, you know, um, hierarchy, and then maybe you know IAN or ICANN, somebody up there at the top there knows some other server who knows that IP address or that host name. Um, and also it can employ root hints. Notice the option here, use root hints if no forwarders are available. So that's the forwarders tab. You know, for me, I usually set up the, uh, you know, my router. If I have dynamic DNS, set up a, on a default gateway or a router. Um, or maybe your ISP's DNS. Let's look at some of the advanced settings. Um, disable recursion. And that also disables forwarders. And, you know, it's disabled by default. If your DNS server is performing adequately, you want to you want it to take the load off of the workstations, off the clients, and handle you know queries recursively to return the best possible answer. But let's say you were in a situation where you know your budget was tight, you couldn't afford to upgrade, and your DNS servers are just being overwhelmed by uh, by queries, constant queries. You could check that option, and if you did, that would give you you know give you quite a bit more performance because it would transfer the workload over towards the you know the clients you know in, in a more iterative uh, query or, or fashion okay bind if you're in a mixed mode network with linux and windows servers bind secondaries more the berkeley internet name um daemon but it will basically allow you to you know have sort of a, a mixed mode network there fail and load if, if bad zone data and to kind of keep things flowing, you probably don't want to enable that. But if you were logging or troubleshooting, you know you might enable that option. Enable round robin. Um, that's enabled by default. And you know round robin, if you're doing clustering or you have a server farm or you're just trying to do load balancing and maybe some fault tolerance, basically what happens is um, I could create a bunch of A records, right? That Maybe they're all the same host name, but they map to different IPs, and that would allow me to, you know, if well, here I'll just I'll do an example. Um, let's say, let's say, uh, cart server one and one nine nine two zero seven thirteen. Um, 200, all right, which is fictional, but I'll just go ahead and add it. Okay, and then let me specify. Let's see, I want to do cart server one, and I'm going to do 199.207.13.201, and I'm going to do cart server one. Again, with another IP address, 199.207.13, and what are we on, 202? Okay, so I just added three A records, and they all have the same host name, but they have different IP addresses. And what Round Robin can do is I could load balance these just on you know different permutations. I could increment the value and maybe customer one, maybe I have a hundred customers buying products and this, this one's busy. So round robin can move them on. It's, it's for all intents and purposes, it's still the shopping cart. It's the cart server, but round robin can move them on to the next one. And so I can kind of load balance. And then if I get a hundred people buying things here, I can move them on to the third one. That way I can handle, you know, more throughput um, and I can balance the load out between multiple servers so not any one server gets more than it can handle. Um, that's the idea, you know, just the idea behind round robin. 
and enable net mask ordering, secure cache against pollution. That's a good option. That's a you know frequent attack that a hacker, you know, an exploit that a hacker might try to employ against Active Directory. Because look, everything in Active Directory depends on DNS. You screw DNS up, you you know, you screw Active Directory up. So it's just a good option. Name checking, notice you know you can specify ANSI or UTF. Um, you know, ANSI would obviously be compatible with you know legacy systems and you know things that don't really understand um, you know anything more sophisticated than than plain text. But this would give you more freedom in terms of you know the characters and things you could do with name resolution and host names. Um, enable automatic scavenging of stale records. And a lot of people recommend against that, but that would help you recover. You know, if you had, if you're using Dynamic Update and you think you might have a lot of bad, you know, old, worthless, outdated information, A records and pointer records and things in your DNS server, you could enable that option. We talked about Ruhence, and remember that ICANN or IANA sets these guys up, and these are basically the IPs of some top level DNS servers. That it'll go out and try to find, and they might, you know, they know where .com and .edu and .mil and .gov are, and then it travels down the hierarchy. So Microsoft.com and Google.com and Yahoo.com, and then update.microsoft.com and you know that whole FQDN hierarchy deal. Um, notice some of the options here. You can edit them. It's not often that they change, but if they do, you can. You can copy them from a server. Maybe your company, your organization, your corporation has custom root hints. If that's the case, you can copy them from a server. Security, there's a DACL just like anything else in Active Directory. And so you can filter and control who can access um, you know, the DNS server and the DNS server features. For that matter, you can do the same thing on A records. If I come over here and go over here and good grief, I can control who can and can't read that A record. So if I wanted to, I could hide it. You know, I could I could have a certain A record or something that's only for, you know, only for administrators, only for people of a certain group, and I can control access with ACES on the DACL, access control entries on the discretionary access control list and ACL. Um, so just trying to go over some of the, the features here. Um, you know, monitoring I can test. You know, if I execute a simple query against a DNS server or a recursive query. You know, here I pass and. Recursive query, I'm not really set up to. Okay, there. All right, so recursive query. And I could perform it automatically if I wanted to. I mean, you wouldn't want to leave that check because it's going to eat up all your performance, you know. Um, but when you're, you know, trying to diagnose a problem or troubleshoot, yeah, sure, those are nice tools. Event logging, I can log events and debug logging. And again, I leave this puppy turned off. Unless you're troubleshooting. Yeah, sure, it gives you lots of great information if you're troubleshooting, but you think about logging every stinking outgoing and incoming and you you know, user data grant protocol, transmission control protocol, all the you log all this stuff, it's really gonna weigh your server down. You know, your server's gonna be unhappy. He's he's gonna be bearing the weight of the world on his poor shoulders. So you don't wanna necessarily do that all the time. No, no, no. But Maybe if, you know, like I said, if you're troubleshooting or you're trying to diagnose issues and things, why is your DNS not doing what you want it to do? Then that can provide you some useful information. And notice you can set the path and the maximum size. So just going through some of those options. Um, and then, of course, we've been through all of these guys here, right? We, you know, WINS, if I was going to make it backwards compatible, like an NT network or... You know, WINS is not as sophisticated as DNS, but it maps a NetBIOS name uh, to an IP. And you can, you know, you can kind of make win, WINS and DNS work in tandem if you want. But that's kind of a, you know, you know, as we move on to, good grief, what is it, like 2011? And, you know, Microsoft's going to be releasing new server products that make 2008 look old. So, you know, I mean, and since 2000, every, you know, they're all DNS. They're not really WINS. So you're probably going to use this feature less and less but um it's there if you need it if you want to use it some organizations do they you know they run dns and wins and tandem zen transfer is not required if it's active directory integrated so i don't have it checked but remember when we did the 
when we went over the standard primary and secondary DNS setup, yeah, we had to check that. We had to specify the servers in the name servers tab. Okay. And of course, there's a DACL for the zone, just like there was for the server. And name servers, and these are servers that, if they needed to, would be, you know, authorized to receive a zone transfer. Start of authority. Remember that if a DNS server is authoritative for a zone, it takes the responsibility of resolving the host name to IPs for that contiguous namespace, or for that little part of the domain namespace. So in this case, you know, Battlestar's that Galaxy Galactica here is an ADI primary server, and it will take authority for resolving anything in Battlestar's.galaxy, or it's the SOA, or start of authority. And notice some of the options down here, the refresh interval, retry, expires, the minimum time to live, and the uh, TTL for this record. Boy, it's, I'm tired. I'm trying not to yawn here a bit. And they say it's contagious. I bet you're going to start yawning now. Um, and then last, just going over some of these. Um, if I look at replication, notice um, this is, you know, again, this would apply to Active Directory Integrated anyway, but I can choose to all DNS servers in the forest, to all DNS servers in the domain, so it would be limited by, you know, trees, um, and then to all domain controllers in the domain. The type, I can do a primary, um, and if I if it's active directory integrated, I can have more than one primary zone. They're all read, write, modifiable copies. It's a multi-master model. If I don't do active directory integrated, um, then only one can be primary, remember? And then the others can be read only secondary. And then a stub zone, of course, if I choose that if I were to choose that option, it doesn't really store um you know, A records or aliases or things like that. Um, it's just, you know, pretty much it'll store the, you know, basically name server records and who has authority to resolve host names for a particular zone. And so it's just kind of, you know, the, the glue records, it just kind of passes the buck and forwards it on to another DNS server who's authoritative for whatever zone it thinks that server is authoritative for. So stub zones, just look at some of the different options here.